Welcome back to Sailing El Haleo. Grab a drink, climb aboard, and let's get going. After four years, it occurred to me that people might not know where a lot of these locations are. <laughs> Since a lot of people that do watch the videos, not that anyone watches, but that's totally fine. But a lot of the people that do watch are friends and family, and they don't know where the Noose River is. Now, if you're a boater and you go up and down the ICW, you know where it is, but if you're not a boater, you don't know. So I'm going to try and start out each video with just a real quick um, showing of the map here so people that aren't boaters will know where exactly I'm talking about. So last week when we left off, we came up the Noose River, which is right over here. And then we came around and went up the Bay River and we went up past Hoboken and we actually anchored right up here in East M Creek. So that's where we're picking up today. And I'm not sure exactly how far we're going, we're going to get, but we're going to go up Goose Creek. And then over here is the Pamlico River. We'll cross that go up the Pungo River. And I know we'll make it to at least this far. This is where we anchored one night and that is right before the Alligator River Pungo River Canal, which is a long narrow ditch that connects the Alligator River with the Pungo River. So I'm not sure if we'll get that far, but that is currently where we're at. I mean, not in real time, but in this video time. After spending a night in East M Creek, just north of Hoboken, North Carolina, we got up and started day five of our forced march to Great Bridge, Virginia. We were getting a little tuckered out at this point, but uh, the, the weather was just too good not to travel. So unbeknownst to us, there was a little bit of uh, fog where we were in the morning here, you can see, but it would get a lot, lot thicker as we left Goose Creek and started crossing Pamlico River. As we exited Goose Creek and started to cross Pamlico River, the fog increased to probably the second worst fog that I've ever traveled in. The first was on our very first trip, Matt and I coming down Chesapeake Bay, we met some really thick fog in Norfolk, which is not where you want to <laughs> experience thick fog. But this was the second worst and I didn't know it was gonna be this bad. I probably still would have left even if I had known. Our visibility was only about 100 yards, but I felt pretty safe crossing uh, Pamlico River. I do have AIS now back on our first trip, we did not. So now I have AIS so I can see anything big that's coming and everyone else would be traveling slowly, except for power boaters, because of course, once your boat reaches a certain horsepower, it's only got two settings, either off or going full speed. That's the only way those guys know how to run those boats. So yeah, cheap shot at power boaters. <laughs> Once we made it across the Pamlico River, the fog dissipated and it turned into a nice sunny day. And we made our way all the way up the Pungo River and that is a beautiful area. Unfortunately, our camera crapped out. Uh, the one camera we have left is a little flaky, so I'm missing chunks of footage, which, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, the Pungo River, about halfway up it is Bellhaven. And I stayed my first winter uh, that we traveled just outside of Bellhaven at the uh, Blackbeard's Cove Marina and Pub when Deb owned it. And so that area's got, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a little special meaning to me. Um, so it's always nice traveling through there. And when the fog was really heavy, I could see on AIS a, a boat called New Market coming up behind me. And I had seen New Market, or actually I first saw it before I left the anchorage in um, East M Creek. So I assumed it would be catching me. I knew it was a tug because we had passed the tug New Market five days earlier, just north of uh, Wrightsville Beach, when we first started uh, our, our journey to, to Great Bridge. And the tug was actually getting slower and slower behind me. And it's, I, you know, El Haleo is the slowest moving boat on the seas. <laughs> so what could possibly be going slower than me? Well, it turns out it was New Market. And the reason they were going so slow is because they were towing the dredge that we passed in all of the dredge pipe. So I don't know where they were going to. I never caught up to them. 
and I never saw the dredge anywhere all the way up to Norfolk, so I'm not sure what their destination was. It must have been an offshoot of the Intracoastal Waterway somewhere, but this is how they move the dredges. It's just this, I, I can't even imagine the logistics, like going through um, Goose Creek, there's a lot of turns, tight turns. I don't know how they maneuver all of this machinery there, but like I said, dredgers, they do the Lord's work, if you will. Um, keeping the waterways open for us and uh, yeah these guys are they're those tug drivers I mean they're awesome <laughs> they're so skilled at moving stuff through the water and all of the little I don't know what their little escorts are called the runabouts but they use those to bend you know and push the back around corners and stuff it's just a, a beautifully choreographed dance and I got a lot of respect for these guys We've had a couple of interesting days. <laughs> so when you're running your engine, uh, in order to stop the engine, you have to pull this handle. If you turn off the key, it actually won't do anything. The engine will continue running. So, um, and just keep that handle in mind for in a minute. <laughs> so down here, so a couple things happened. First, the engine was starting up really hard, really tough. I should have had this opened up first. Parting all the dog treats on the floor. Okay. So, sorry to us. In here, when you pull that handle, and dog fur is slowly taking over everything. I need to get in here and vacuum all this stuff out. Uh, so down here on the engine, this, let's see, that would be better. This here's the throttle. So you pull on the throttle and this will move back and forth and that'll feed fuel to it. And down here, right below it, when you pull that handle, it actuates this here and there's this little rocker arm here so when you pull the handle it moves that uh, rocker arm back and then when you push the handle down um, there's this well, I can't there we go so this little arm rocks down and there's a spring on it that has tension there that rocks that back and the engine started really hard for two days in a row. I had to give it a lot of throttle. And you can tell if it's a voltage issue or a fuel flow issue. And I could tell it was a fuel flow issue and the, um, we didn't have high fuel pressure. So I knew it had to be, or I just kind of figured it must have been something with this. So I came down here and looked and sure enough, even after you push the handle back, this was staying in the uh, closed position. So I oiled this spring up here, and uh, it seems to be working better now, but I'll just have to keep an eye on it. I might have to replace that spring, but now I know it's causing it, so it's no big deal. Um, and I open up the engine bay every morning to check the raw water strainer, the coolant, the oil, and the fuel, um, so I can always just check to make check the position of this, so that is good. And now, this time of year, I've actually got everything shut down electric-wise, except for the solar panels. So all of our DC to DC converters here, I actually have all of them shut off because our solar can keep up with everything this time of year. So we got into an interesting situation where the alternator, here's the uh, regulator for the alternator, that was putting out 14.8 volts, whoops, and more dog fur in here. So that was putting out 14.8 volts, and since the, let me turn the radio down, since the DC to DC converters were not siphoning off that voltage, all of the voltage was going to our lead acid battery, and we boiled about half of the water out of that thing. So. I could smell something burning when we were motoring, but I couldn't find what it was, <laughs> uh, which is frustrating, especially when you're in canals and you can't really come down here and look for very long. 
but I found it after we stopped and it was the battery. It was smoking. There was battery acid sprayed everywhere. It was a mess uh, and it still smells a little bit, uh, but the smell is, is greatly reduced. So I refilled the water on that. And then I, there's a little potentiometer screw up in here where you can change the voltage coming off of the alternator. So I dialed it back to 13.8 volts and it's been running fine since then. Now this does, or we haven't boiled over the battery, I should say, and we have voltage and everything seems to be working, but there's still something going on because about four hours after we start, the alternator regulator now faults out. Um, and I don't know why. It's really not that big of a deal right now. It's not going to affect us at all because it runs for a couple of hours in the morning, which is more than enough to recharge the battery. And the battery can actually keep the engine running for probably, I would guess, maybe a week without, after, without actually having any charge going into it. And I have a bridge, so I can always turn the lithium system on to run the engine. Or I can turn, I can switch the engine to the lithium system if I have to. So, I don't know why that's tripping out. I'm going to try tomorrow to turn one of the DC to DC converters back on and see if that still faults out. Um, I might have to dial the voltage back up a little bit. So, I'm not sure what exactly is going on there. So... But as of right now, nothing is super critical. Our plastic bag is still working in the fuel filter housing. We haven't had any leaks there. So this should be good. To get us back to Delaware City, and I just have, it's just that one issue now. Everything else is sorted. So, you know, it's always something because I've, the entire winter I've always run at least one of the DC to DC converters every time we we ran or we motored so this is the first time just this week that i've turned everything off i've got the wind generator off to save um, wear and tear on the turbine and i've got all the dc to dc converters off and you know by noon we have all of our power uh you know our battery bank is topped back off to 100 percent uh, just from the solar so so we're not in any any critical danger there's just the one little curious thing about the regulator um, but I can I can experiment with that so over this uh, next week hopefully I'll get that sorted out but it's always something <laughs> there's always something going on uh, at, at this point I might be a borderline diesel mechanic <laughs> obviously that's not true if something actually genuinely went wrong with the diesel uh, I yeah i'm not sure i would be the person to uh to fix that so everything's running fine um but you know these little things that when you run the system other than the way you had been running it you know can can pop up so uh we're doing good i think i'm gonna have a beer and uh i hope y'all are doing well and i'll talk to you later bye bye and that's all we have time for this week. I would like to give a massive shout out to my Patreon crew. Without your guys' support, I wouldn't make these videos. And my Patreon crew is Joan and Juddy Judnick, Val and Chris Alcorn, Denise and Eli Sackett, Sherry Erickson, Deb Shaw, Matthew Spotton, Peter Allen, and Natalie Linehan. Thank you guys so very much. Your support really means the world to me. I do have one legacy patron member, and her name is Joan Linbo. Unfortunately, she has passed on, but she lives on in our hearts forever. We really miss you, Joan. If you are interested in joining our Patreon crew, there is a link in the description down below, and that'll take you to our Patreon page where you can sign up. And there are hundreds, literally hundreds of extra videos and photos of our travels, and I try and keep everything there up to date and post at least once or twice a week. So it gives you a little peek behind the curtain. If you do like our videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. That'll help us out more than you'll ever know, and that actually doesn't cost you anything. So hit that like button. Alrighty, I hope you all are well, and we'll see you next week.